Hey there, weavers. Welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving. And we are getting ready to do the uh, edge finishing on our Diamonds and Bar 12 rug. So here is the rug that we have finished. And you can see I have left quite a bit of um, the warp yarn here. And I actually had a little bit of extra... Um, warp left over so I kind of experimented with some uh, different patterning and a different uh, weft uh, yarn for the black because I didn't have any have any more of the black left over uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, do the finishing on the main rug and I decided I'm going to, instead of doing a double Damascus or a full Damascus edge, I am going to do a, um, what's called a Mori edge. Um, I did it with a different rug and I really like the look of it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So let's get started. So here is the rug. And I've got it so that the back is facing up. And I've weighted it with uh, a few of my favorite books. Um, they're nice and heavy. And this will just keep it from moving around. Um, uh, this rug is fairly reversible. Um, you can see that it's lighter colors are on the front. And then the darker colors are on the back. Um, but... There's a small air right here, so I will probably keep the light side faced up um, on my floor, unless I can figure out how to fix this mistake um, off the loom. So the Mori Edge is a five-step process, um, but the beginning is a little bit different. So. I'm going to undo the loose knot that I made when I did the twining. And we will incorporate the twining uh, thread into the edging. So I'll work the twining threads in after I work these first uh, couple threads. So these were my salvage threads. So we're going to take thread one and we're going to put it under thread two. And we'll put that up there. Then we're going to take thread two and put it under thread three and put it under there. Now we're going to take the top twining thread so that it kind of gets captured in and we'll use that as our next thread. And we'll kind of pull those in opposite directions. Not too hard or that twining thread will come out. Um, now we're going to take thread four, pass it over thread three, and then bring thread one down between the two. And that stays up there. And then move this thread up to there. Now we're going to take the next thread and we're going to put it over that thread and we'll push this thread up here and we'll move this thread off to the side. Now we're back to our beginning. So we're going to do that again. We're going to cross this thread over this thread, bring this thread down and this thread up. Now we're going to take the next thread and I'm going to use one of these here and try and get my twining thread in there and push it over that one and then up, and then these go off to the side. And it's a little hard to see because I'm using my thumb and finger to kind of 
capture everything. But you're going to take this, the right thread, over the left thread. Bring this thread down between the two. And move this one up. Now bring the next thread and cross it over. So now that you've got three threads down here, move this thread up here and push this thread off to the side. And then we're going to kind of tug those into place. So let's do that again. Cross them, bring it down, move that up, Grab the next thread, cross it in, and move that up. So let's do it a little bit faster. Cross, down, up, cross, up, over. and kind of tug them back into place. So, and once you get away from the edge, it makes it a little bit easier because they're not all trying to compete for the same space. Cross down, move that up, bring the next one in, move that up, and over. Cross, down, up, over, up, over. And we will just continue doing this all the way across. Try not to lose our place because I find when I'm doing this, if I lose my place, it's hard to get it back. Now there's um, two different ways to do this edge. Um, you can do it so that the fringe either lays to the back of the rug, which is the way I'm going to be doing it, or you can do it so that the fringe comes out in between to the two row ridges that it will end up making. And you can see that uh, this is my waste yarn that I've got here and I'm leaving that in until I get up to it um, so that I don't, uh, the edge doesn't pull out. Um, it probably wouldn't, given that I have the um, twining in there, but it's a good idea to leave it. So we go one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Bye. 
tape. And I will write out these instructions and for each step and put them down in the description also. That might be a little helpful. Okay, so we are coming up to the end, and I wanted to show you, sorry, I can't talk and do this at the same time. I wanted to show you what uh, you do here at the end because there are a couple different ways to proceed depending on, as I said at the beginning of the video, how you want the fringe to uh, show or if you want the fringe to show. So we'll just... Um, Continue on like we've been doing. Until we get to the last threads. And I lost my place. I messed that up. Okay, so we're going to cross those, bring this down, this one over. this over, bring it up, okay, that is the last one, okay, so here we've got the last four threads. And um, to proceed from here, uh, we so we need to do this whole series again. But whether we do it on this side or on the reverse side will determine where our fringe lies. So if we take this, and we begin without moving the rug, we begin at the other end again. The fringe will continue to lay to the back of the rug as it's doing here. This is the way that I plan on doing this because I'm going to put these threads and uh, feed them up 
into the warp and bury them or up through the weft and bury them. Um, however, if you want the threads to come out or the fringe, if you're going to keep the fringe and you want the fringe to come out, what you can do is you'll create with your second row of uh, the Mori edge, it will create a second ridge. And if you flip the rug over and do it, continue from this end and go back across, then the fringe will come out and exit between the two ridges. And then you can cut your fringe, you know, however long you want and uh, leave it. So I can demonstrate both ways, but what I need to do is um, I need to flip the rug over in order to do that. And I need to hang on to this. <laughs> Actually, I think what I'll do, so I'm going to tie a loose knot with these four threads. And that will kind of keep them uh, stabilized. And we're going to take and flip the whole rug over. And we're going to pull all of our fringe back down so that it's like it was before. And then we'll move this. over to the other end again and put the books back on and we will start from this end again so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this knot okay. all right so we've got our let's see if I can figure out which way is which So we've got our uh, four cords lined up and we're going to continue on with the same sequence. So we're going to cross them, bring them down, up. Take the next one, cross it over, bring it up, and there. So we'll continue that just like we did the first time around. And uh, this time should go fairly quickly. And again, once I get past the very edge here, it makes it easier.
So I'll get a little ways down here and then I can show you how the fringe will uh, be coming out in between the two ridges. If I was going to do a rug with a fringe on it, this is definitely the treatment that I would use for the edge because it really does look really nice. Okay, so I think that that's far enough that you'll be able to see. So you can see how the fringe lays nice and flat and there's these two ridges of the finish on either side of the fringe and it comes out and it lays really nice and flat. So um, that is if you want the fringe to remain, you could, you know, cut it off at an inch or two and it would really make a nice finish. But like I said in previous videos, my husband hates fringe, so we're going to go with fringeless. Um, so I will flip the rug back over and then um, show you how we will start from the other end and do the same thing and how that will have the fringe laying up against the back of the rug. Okay, so I took the segment out um, that I just demonstrated and this is the, as if I had just finished the first row. And we're going to take these uh, last four threads and we're going to just tie a loose knot to keep everything in place on this side. I'm going to pull all of our fringe down um, to the bottom and then we will move back to the beginning of the rug. For this uh, repeat, what we're going to do is just like we did with when we started the um, process uh, at the very beginning. So we're going to take thread one, put it behind thread two. When we're going to take thread two and put it behind thread three. And then we'll bring thread four in. And so now we have our four threads going in opposite directions. And then we're going to start the process again. So we just cross, bring thread one down, bring that right hand thread up, bring the next thread in, and cross it over, bring that thread up, and move that. Okay, so let's do that again. Cross, bring it down, Bring that up, bring this over, bring that up, and across. Cross, down, up, over, and up, and move that one over. down, up, over, and up. And now that I am away from the edge, I'm going to Move my hands a little bit so that you can better see what's going on under here. So we're going to cross them. Bring this one down. Move that one up. Bring the next thread, cross it over. 
So now you've got three threads there. Take that far right one now and move it up. Again, cross, down, move it up, cross this over, and move that up. And if you don't keep your fingers um, on here holding everything, it tends to kind of loosen up. So that's why it's a good idea to keep your um, thumb and finger on there. Keep everything supported. So we will just continue on until I get to the end and then I will show you um, what we do at the end. Um, and uh, a couple different ways that you can treat the fringe depending on um, what you want to do. You can see how the uh, fringe is naturally wanting to lay up against the back of the rug. And that's what we want. So I just thought I would demonstrate that if you need to leave for some reason or I don't know maybe you have to use the bathroom while you're doing this um, it's best to kind of separate these four threads lay them out and if even if you have um, you know, maybe like a couple books to put on them it's just kind of Put something on those threads to make sure that they don't get um, disturbed and then you can come back and pick up where you left off. So um, we'll continue on and when I get to the end I will show you how to do that. Okay so we're almost down to the end now. Just a few more repeats. And these last few are kind of challenging to keep track of. 
just like at the beginning. So we'll just go slow. Okay. So now take holding everything tight. Uh, so these are this is the loose knot that I created at the end of the last repeat. And what I'm going to do is undo that knot and I will work these in like this. So there I've got those last few done. And you can do one of uh, a couple things here. So if you're going to, you could take these uh, three double threads and you could braid them into a short braid like this. And have that just kind of sticking off on the corner so you could braid it down and then tie an overhand knot uh, and that would look nice um, but if you don't want something hanging off here um, you could you can bury these uh, just like we're gonna do with the work the rest of the warp threads and I think that's what I am going to do so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to unbraid this like so and I'm just going to go there and then I'm just going to again tie a loose overhand knot here just to keep these um, all secured until I get to them. So what we're going to do is we're going to, and you can see this leaves a very nice um, double uh, ridge here and when the rug is laying flat uh, it will look like this. So what you could do if you wanted, if this was a rug that you only wanted to use one side, um, you could go ahead and take uh, the warp threads in pairs and um, tie knots, just tie overhand knots here um, and push them up against the ridge like that and then uh, tighten them up real good and then you could cut them off at uh, you know three quarters of an inch or so um, and then those would lay very nicely against the back of the rug um, but what we're going to do is we're going to take these and this is kind of a, a long <laughs> involved process but um, I find it gives a really nice look. So we'll kind of separate some of these out. And we're going to take these one at a time and we'll thread them through a uh, tapestry needle like this. It's a blunt uh, tapestry needle. And then 
we'll pull the warp back and we'll just push that up into the warp along the existing weft just like that and we'll do that with each one and probably what I will end up doing is so I'll just feed these in up through here And what I like to do is not come out at the same spot um, each time so that it doesn't leave a ridge. Uh, and then I will come back when I'm all done and I will clip these off. So if you just tug them real good, clip them off real close and then tug it back, they completely disappear. So, and that will keep them secure and then, uh, then we can finish the, wet finish the rug and um, block it and uh, put it down. So I hope that you enjoyed watching this video and I found it helpful. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel and giving it a thumbs up. Thanks and happy weaving.